Hey y'all, it's Leslie with Fat Cat Flossing. Welcome back to my channel. I'm glad you're here to visit for today. I'm glad you're back, whether you just found me or you're a returning um, viewer, I'm glad to have you. Um, fair warning, I am seriously sleep deprived. I've got a bad case of the stupid, so I don't know if hilarity or just idiocy is going to ensue, but be prepared. Today is Friday, November 30th, 2018. It's about 12.30 on Friday afternoon. Um, I'm just back from um, making the first of the month trip to Sam's. Payday Friday, less than a month before Christmas. I wouldn't recommend it that, you know, we were out of paper towels and about to be out of toilet paper. So, gotta do what you gotta do, right? Um, I've had another crazy week. Um, Beanie's babies were due um, actually tomorrow. And typically when my girls are due um, about three days before I think they're due, I start getting up every one to two hours during the night and checking on them. And so I was already sleep deprived. And then when I got up to check on her about um, 12.30 or one last night, I decided I thought she was probably in labor. And sure enough, um, I stayed with her and um, she has two little, I think, girls, not positive yet. It's really hard to tell when they're that little, but she has two new babies that arrived um, between uh, four and five this morning. So I've had about two hours of sleep, plus being, you know, haven't gotten up over a couple hours the last couple of nights. So yeah, I'm stupid tired. Um, so when this is over and I get it started uploading, I believe that there is a nap in my future especially since um, our weather forecast is a little scary. Um, I'm not a big fan of the Thunder Boomer crazy weather that's likely to spend off tornadoes. And the weather forecast says that that's what should be moving through here around four or five this afternoon for the next you know, 12 hours or so after that. So y'all say a little prayer, I don't get blown away. I'm just scared poopless of tornadoes. <laughs> so get my nap in now because I have my doubts about how much sleep I'll get tonight. Um, but anyway, um, I'm sorry, like I said, I'm just, um, I'm sorry. I'm sleep deprived and dumb. Um, I did, um, I didn't get a whole lot of stitching done this week because I had kind of some other things going on and then, you know, stupid tired. But I did have two finishes, one of which was actually a start and finish. Well, it was really a restart. Y'all have probably all seen the selfie sampler from Lizzie Kate. And I actually started this, I think it was one of the four I started that week after Christmas last year. Um, and I got about probably close to half done with it and decided I didn't like it because I was doing it one thread um, over a 30 count. Um, and doggone it, I don't remember what my linen is. It's pink. <laughs> but I got about half, not quite half done and Stephanie had just finished hers and hers looked so much better than mine because she was using one, two threads and I was using one. So I ripped it all out, and this past week I restarted and actually finished the selfie sampler. And I'm pretty happy with it. It looks much better um, with the two threads over one, or two threads over two, rather one over two on this particular one. And I typically like one over two, but it just wasn't cutting the mustard on this. So I'm pretty happy with that, and I think that's going to end up as like a little, little pillow. I think, little pin keep. So soon I will have this as a giveaway, and of course it won't have the little button and beads because I've used those. But I will have the pattern available for one of you guys, not this week, but hopefully soon. And then I was all proud of myself, thinking, "Ooh, I have two finishes," and I do almost. And I thought I was finished. But <laughs> this is Welcome Spring by Brenda Gervais. And I love that sheet. Y'all know I'm a sheet fanatic. 
I pulled this out a minute ago because this is going to be this week's giveaway. And I noticed that last night when I was finishing this up, I haven't done this. These are long stitches here. This hay looking, straw looking stuff under the eggs. I forgot to do that. So I have to go back and finish that up. But that's, I mean, like a 10 minute thing. That won't take any time at all. And when that's done, then Welcome Spring will be done. And I just love Robin and the sheep and those pretty blue eggs. This is a mystery um, Lugana from my 20 year old stash. It's a 32 count bone um, Lugana. And I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Um, the sheep's legs could have been a little bit more visible, but hey, pays your money and takes your chances, right? I love the little, hope y'all can see. His little ear is satin stitched. I'm sorry, my light is terrible today. Set and stitch you on the ear. And then on these little bees here, the little long stitches to do the wings. I think those came out really cute. So I'm very, very happy with that. Like I said, I've just got to go back and put that straw looking stuff in along here and that won't take me any time. And then that'll be done. So that's all the stitching I got done this week. And I didn't have, I mean, I completely did the selfie sampler thing, but that's what wasn't very big. And on this one, all I had left to do was um, maybe 20% of the sheep left and then the grass down here. And then I had to do things like the little bees and do the spokes on the wheels. Um, so I didn't have a whole lot left to do on that. I think I worked on it for two days and got it finished up. But it's really cute. I like it a lot. And I will get those long stitches put in to do the straw ASAP. The other thing I did this week, well, let me back up. Um, Several weeks ago, I sent um, a bunch of beads to Cheryl, Cheryl McKinney of Tranquil Stitches. And some of y'all may know, I used to make a lot of beaded jewelry. I mean, I had an Etsy shop and I made and I sold a lot of beaded jewelry. And I had literally a, an antique trunk about, I guess about three and a half feet long, by about 26 inches deep and about two and a half feet tall, I mean, full, full of beads. I thought C was gonna shoot me when we moved a couple years ago because um, beads are basically rocks and they're really heavy. Well, long story short, I got to look into the beads. I'd given a lot of them away to Charlotte and I packed up a whole bunch and sent them to Cheryl. And I got bead fever when I was going through them, looking at those to send Cheryl. My favorite kind of bead is what's called lamp work. Lamp work is where um, a glass artist sits over a, um, a butane um, or propane flame and melts glass rods, colored glass rods, to make beads. Um, I love lamp work. I think the beads are absolutely beautiful. They come in a huge variety of, of different um, styles and types and kinds, um, but I think they're just all beautiful. <laughs> I think they're so beautiful that, oh, I guess about three or four years ago, I drove up to Houston and took an eight-hour class because I had these grandiose plans that I was going to learn to do lamp work. I am here to tell you that I now appreciate it even more because at the end of that eight-hour class, all I knew was that that was not my calling. I'm glad I did it because I have a huge appreciation for the people who do do it and it's very cool, but mm -mm, no, not this fat girl. Yep, um, but they're gorgeous and I have a lot of them. I mean, I had thousands of dollars invested in beads and a lot proportion of that in lamp work. So when I went through all these beads a couple weeks ago, I just was appreciating how pretty they are and I'm gonna show you just a couple. This is a bead, and I don't know that you'll be able to really appreciate how pretty they are. This one, and this one, I hope you can appreciate the intricacy of these, because this is built up in layers and layers and layers, and encased in clear glass on this particular one, and then decorated. Um, like this one actually has Swarovski, Swarovski crystals, I have the hardest time with that word, set into it. Um, 
This one is actually a little elephant, if you can see. And these three round ones are, are what are called Bali beads from um, Amy Kuczewski. Kuczewski, I think is how she says her name. Um, and they are, I mean, for instance, that outlining on the elephant is done with a glass rod no larger than a pencil lead to get that very fine line. And these were made, the flowers were made by um, Suze... Verena, something like that. She's Danish, I believe. Um, anyway, I have a bunch of beads. And because I have so many beads and I think they're so pretty, I have decided that I'm going to make some scissor fobs with them. Like, look at this one. Isn't he gorgeous? It's a cat with some flowers. So pretty. Um, and guitar, and these are just some fun colored ones. Anyway, I have several of these scissor fobs made up, and I have a boatload more beads. Um, most of the ones that I have are the Bali beads, these kind of round ones, and I have them in a plethora of colors because I think that they are gorgeous, and I stocked up on them. Anyway, I'm making these scissors fobs. If you are interested in one, um, I am selling them for $3 more than what I paid for the bead four or five years ago. So for instance, this one's for sale for 50 bucks, but I paid $47 for that bead, which was shipped from Germany. This is a Manuela Hagen bead, and she's in Germany. Um, and they're mostly one of a kind and collector's items. But anyway, if you are interested in a scissor fob, just let me know. Um, you can tell me, you know, I have a favorite color. I like this or I like that or the other. And I'm gonna be making some of these up and I will have them for sale. Um, they're gonna range anywhere from about $18 up to, I don't think I will have any, I mean, that's probably the most I paid for a single bead on anything. I have a couple of sets of beads that I paid more than that for, but I think those might be too heavy for scissor fobs anyway. But if there's something in particular that you like, let me know because um, I'm going to be selling those. And now I'm going to take a minute and put them up because I don't want to break them. And I am so clutchy that that is never out of the realm of possibility. Um, but anyway, I will have some scissor fobs available, and I put some up the last couple of days on my Instagram page, but you can message me or email me here if you're interested, and the contact information will be in the drop-down under the video. Okay, plans. Um, I was bad. I worked on that. I got the bug to do that selfie sampler, and I worked on that instead of finishing my Tis the Season, which I really wanted to finish by December 1st, but, you know, that's not going to happen. So my next thing is I think I'm gonna work on that one like it's my job and try to get it finished. And then I'm going to try for the rest of the month um, to see how many um, things I have started that might be kind of within striking distance of getting finished. And hi, Story, did you come to visit? Um, that might be kind of within striking distance of getting done and um, see what I can finish up. Let me introduce you to another one of my babies. This is Story. She, her name is um, Never Ending Story. She's a seal lynx point. Pretty, pretty girl, huh, Story? Yeah, huh, baby? And she's probably one of the next girls I'm going to breed. I, I've got a couple girls in visiting Ori right now, but she's had one litter. So she'll probably go meet Ori again pretty soon because her babies were, are almost a year old. Huh, oh, little girl? Pretty girl, say hi. All right, you can get down. Um, anyway, my plan is to work on stuff that I've got started and see if I can finish anything up before the end of the year because I do have some plans for starts. And when I get a little bit more organized on that, I will um, talk more about that because I'm too tired to be organized right now. Um, I was disappointed last week. I was supposed to go up to Fayetteville on Friday and meet with Linda Jo Cobb, Pretty Southern. 
and uh, we had plans to get together and stitch on Friday. And unfortunately, she had a, a, some additional family commitments come up where she couldn't make it, but we are planning to get together. She'll be back to Northwest Arkansas next spring. So hopefully we'll get to meet in person then. I'm really looking forward to that because I think she's just cute as a bug. Um, hmm, okay, so I'm going fast because I'm taking a nap when this is done. <laughs> Again, this is Welcome Spring um, from Brenda Gervais. And this is going to be my giveaway this week. Sorry, I know it's not seasonally appropriate, but hey, I just didn't go dig something else out of my box of patterns. <laughs> um, but anyway, you'll be getting the pattern. I do have my working copy that I made is folded up and in here, so you'll get a working copy with it. Um, and what I want you to do is tell me, are you a seasonal stitcher? Say... Just use the words seasonal stitcher um, if you want to be entered to win this. Um, God willing and the creek don't rise, I'll be back again next Friday and we will, I'll do the um, comment picker thing to choose the winner then. Um, so tell me, are you a seasonal stitcher? Do you stitch winter during the winter and Christmas at Christmas and spring at spring? Or are you like me and you just stitch whatever you want when you want it? That's what I'm like. Um, so that's it, that's all I have this week. Not a whole lot of stitching. Uh, I'm gonna get this uploaded, fingers crossed, before the bad weather comes and my internet gets slower than ever. And then, please Lord, a nap. I really, really need a nap. So that's my plan. So I hope you guys have a great weekend. I hope you're not gonna have bad weather like I am. Um, and I hope you have a great, you know, next week. Hope to see you again next Friday. You guys have a great week. God bless, bye-bye.